After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue... Dystopia. An imagined place or state in which everything is unpleasant or bad. It's the theme for a lot of settings within media, and video games specifically, the most recent of which is receiving plenty of hype and criticism. We Happy Few, a game set within the town of Wellington... Wells. Oh, fuck, that's clever as shit. Forget all my complaints about the lack of tension within the game that assumes that stealth means knock everyone out and steal their shit like an autistic Skyrim with Bioshock aesthetic. Punch my complaints about ham-fisted and unnecessary soliloquy and how a little it does to convey the realism of the situation and how it actually removes oneself from becoming immersed within the game down my throat. I don't know shit about video games or proper storyboard writing. They named their town Wellington Wells. Holy fuck. We're dealing with legends, folks. Actual fucking legends. A-plus game design. Compulsion did an amazing job. But seriously. Dystopia is a term you see in games everywhere, and while I'm a fan of reading the sentence set in a dystopian future as much as the next guy, I have a few complaints about We Happy Few and the saturation of dystopia in general. Mind you, I will be focused on the theme of the game and any negative comment on the actual gameplay and how it feels like I'm playing something from 2006 should be taken with a grain of salt since it's still in early access. I'd also like to add that if you see holes in my logic, feel free to point them out in the comments section below. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. In 1981, French philosopher Jean Baudrillard released a philosophical treatise titled Simulacra and Simulation, in which our main man Bobo claims that our reality has replaced all reality and meaning with symbols and signs. In other words, our reality is a simulacra created by symbolism within culture and media in that all meaning was being rendered meaningless by oversaturation of perceived reality. It's a pretty crazy concept and is one of the main themes within the popular Matrix movie franchise. Within the SNS, there is an analogy derived from the fable titled On Exactitude in Science, in which an empire spent so much time creating a perfect map of itself that when the empire crumbled, all that remained was the map itself. In that sense, Baudrillard compared the destruction of the Empire to the destruction of reality due to disuse. And this is very important for a handful of reasons we'll cover later in this video. We Happy Few is set in the town of bullshit nameland after a cataclysmic world war tore England apart and left Nazis in your backyard. The townsfolk didn't take well to that, so they invented a new way to cope. Joy. A pill that causes the user to hallucinate and only see bright, sunshiny days. And more importantly... To forget the gravity of the situation they're in. Enter you, a person who comes down off of joy randomly and is presented with a choice. Take the pill and continue to have your memories blocked, or refuse to take your pills and remember everything. This is an interesting and possibly unintentional reference to the germ theory and the dangers it poses to dystopian regimes. This topic is covered very well by one Clea D. Harris who in April of 2015 submitted the germ theory of dystopias. Fears of Human Nature in 1984 and Brave New World. In it, she states that microorganisms pervading the world and causing life-threatening diseases that are often fought through the use of various medicines is comparable to non-normativity pervading and threatening dystopian regimes. It literally compares the oddball fighting the regime in a dystopia to a disease that is either dealt with or kills its host. Here the analogy of various medicines is realized as a literal pill that residents take to forget their woes and just be happy. And the stigma around not taking the pill is such that if you miss a dosage or refuse to take it anymore, you're attacked, labeled a downer, and cast out of society. But please, hold your applause for Compulsion Games for tackling tough statements on society until the end, because we've yet to see anything that isn't tackled better in other media such as The Matrix or Bioshock. Now let's take a look at the allegory of the cave presented by Plato. In it, Plato has Socrates describe a group of people who have lived their entire lives chained to a wall, in a cave, facing another blank wall. The only outside stimuli these people receive comes in the form of shadows projected on the wall by things passing in front of a fire behind them. Given time, these people begin to give the shadows names and they attribute reality to them. Socrates goes on to state that the philosopher is like a prisoner who, upon being freed from the chains, discovers the true natures of the shadows and realizes that they are not reality as he can perceive the true form of reality rather than the mere shadows. In We Happy Few, this is realized when the player chooses to remember instead of forgetting everything and taking his pill. He is then capable of viewing the world as it really is, and maybe this comparison dives a little deeper, but I'll leave you hanging on that one for just a bit longer. 
I'm about to judge We Happy Few based on its setting and gameplay. Now, before you crucify me for judging a game in early access despite fucking every game going early access for no good reason, I would like to quote a friend of mine, Zach, I suck dick for money, Dixon. Zach brought up an excellent point, specifically in response to an early access content defender who stated that reviewing early access is akin to reviewing the door of a car before it's attached. Zach specifically said, it depends on how far through development a game is and what issues there are. If it just needs some polish, it's not a big deal, but if core gameplay concepts are bad, they're probably not going to get reworked before release. I don't know what kind of car these doors are going on, but I bet it's not a Porsche. This. This is exactly what I myself couldn't find the words for. We Happy Few is certainly not a Porsche, and it's high time I tied the theme of this writing together. So this is happening, keyboard warriors. Brace yourselves. You as the player are both the philosopher and the germ, threatening a dystopian society while also looking in and seeing it for what it really is. You are the one, surrounded by other downers, you alone are capable of escaping to the mainland. You're the main character. The island is both the shackles and the cave, using joy to cast shadows and simulate reality to keep the inhabitants enthralled within their simulacra. The mainland is the empire as a whole, which the island is reflective of. If, if this sounds like a mess of metaphors, then you'd be correct, it is. But it's something we see a lot in the video game industry nowadays. Everything is formulaic and tries to emulate the success of games in the past rather than break new ground as most gamers desire. We're told all too often that developers only follow these formulas for success because we don't know what we truly want. We don't want something new. But when a new game comes out, does something different, and does it well, it's immediately assimilated into the formula by all developers around it. It's it's a tad hypocritical. We Happy Few isn't the only culprit, and certainly it attempts to do something more. It is the culmination of ham-fisted attempts at being quirky and unique while not actually breaking any molds whatsoever, and in fact combining multiple popular and successful themes and concepts to create a Frankenstein's Bride that is definitely appealing at face value while providing a shallow experience with very little actual direction. In short, it rides off the success of greater games like the original Bioshock while not actually providing anything unique in any way. There was no story originally planned because the developer wanted to play off the Clockwork Orange aesthetics to comp compensate for its lack of true atmosphere and its vapid takes on dystopia and what it truly means to exist within a simulation of an alternative reality. Those great and compassionate souls at Compulsion wanted you to experience a brand new game every single time you played it, because procedurally generated games are so unique and totally not overplayed in every other survival game in early access on Steam. It's like the interactive matrix for people who want to feel like their thoughts are deep and dark and brooding and nobody else can think like them ever because they truly believe that their human experience is unique and they are the one who can fight the agents and save humanity from joy. It's an absolute crock of shit. But I could have ignored all that. I could have ignored the horrible setting, the abysmal atmosphere, the lack of any tension whatsoever if they had just made sure the gameplay was good. And is the gameplay good? Well, no. No, it's fucking not. It tries to cover too much ground, honestly. Its survival mechanics are annoying and repetitive to say the least. I've suffered more warnings about how tired I am, how thirsty I am, how hungry I am, that it feels like they wanted me to play a very shitty dystopian life simulator. And let's real talk about survival mechanics for a second. If you're going to make your resource bars immediately begin depleting upon me replenishing them, I want you to go ahead and reduce the cost of your fucking game every single time someone purchases it. Because if my resource gain isn't that meaningful, then yours shouldn't be either. Every two fucking minutes I was thirsty again. I had to work in a circle around the water pumps and we happy few. It was, for lack of a better word, it was bullshit. And finding food that wasn't rotted was pointless because the you are hungry message accompanied the you are thirsty message every two minutes. It's bullshit. Again. And combat in it is horrible. There's little points in it because the act of defending yourself makes the game less tense immediately. The AI are actual garbage. It's, it's like beating up a sock puppet, but I don't know why I'm beating up a sock puppet. Like, ugh. And the fucking weapon breaking system. The 
fucking weapon breaking system. Oh my god. I could hardly kill a person with a fucking club before it broke. I don't know what those weapons are made of. I, I guess fucking wet noodles. Ugh. Look, I said I wouldn't harp on these things because it's early access, but what we happy few could have been is exactly what it isn't. It's lacking tension because so many frivolous things break the immersion. Because the psychological fear they tried to play off of is so amateurishly manufactured that the only people this is going to scare are people afraid of masks. Make no mistake, this game is in early access, it still has a chance. But just like many other games that go to early access to die, there are underlying issues with the message conveyed through the game. We Happy Few is not a Porsche, and it's heartbreaking to say that. But hey, want to mend my broken and decrepit heart? Leave a like, I always appreciate that. For those curious, this is part of my damn series in which I try to take a closer look at media, give some information, and then give my opinions, whether they're angry or otherwise. If you don't agree with them, then let me know in the comments. I, by all means, I, I'm well aware that I can be wrong sometimes, or if not all the time. And if you're interested in more damn, well, I'm sorry to say, but I only have one other episode out right now, and it's on TF2 and Overwatch. Links will be in the description below. It's a very young series, but I have plenty of rants and discussions to go around, so be sure to check those out. I hope you folks have a fine and excellent day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.